Amém? Está sendo projetado. Diz assim. E disse-lhes, não se abram as portas de Jerusalém até que o sol aqueça. Enquanto assistirem ali, fechem as portas e vós trancai-as. E ponha-se de guardas dos moradores de Jerusalém, cada um na sua guarda. E cada um diante de sua casa. Amém? Meus irmãos, na época de Brothers, um, in the time of Nehemiah, the temple that had been destroyed, it was already reunified. In the order to, for the reconstruction of the temple in Jerusalem was given when the king called Cyril, Cyril, Cyril the Great, Cyrus the Great. And the Lord says to Cyrus, he was his chosen one. And it says, I called you by your name. Followed by your last name. So Cyril, he had a personal experience with the Lord. And the Lord gave to Cyril his last name. What Cyril's last name? The Great. The Lord says, uh, uh, Cyril, he's my anointed. So to verify the temple of Jerusalem, the Lord used Cyrus, um, someone that was not Jew, to reconstruct, uh, rebuild the temple for Jews. And it is written in Exodus, the brothers may go there and take a look in chapter 3, uh, 2, it says, um, Cyrus, uh, Cyrus gave um, uh, he was supposed to edify the house in Jerusalem that was from the Jews, from Jews and edify the house of the Lord in Israel, that is the God that he habitates in Jerusalem. And the temple in Jerusalem was uh, redified. And it just also says, um, chapter 6, um, verse 14 says, And the elders uh, of Judas, so they edified the house and blessed uh, upon to the commandment of Israel, of the commandment of Cyrus. And they finished the house in the third year until the, until the ages of the king Iru. So the temple was redified, it was rebuilt, and they sacrificed animals and they made feasts. But we can think like, oh, um, but the temple was built. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. But the city of Jerusalem is still destroyed. Today in Israel, we have one edified as a city built. I'm restored, rebuilt, but we have a temple destroyed. In the time of Nehemiah, the temple was rebuilt and the city destroyed. But today, like today's day, the city is rebuilt, but the temple is destroyed. And in Jerusalem today, what is left of, of the temple? It is a wall. What is the name of the, the wall in Jerusalem? 
Lamentações. The Wailing Wall. Uma cidade a city sem um templo. Without a temple. É um it is lamento. Wailing. Um templo a sem lament. a cidade. A temple without a city. It is written right here. In Nehemiah. In the first chapter. Miseria. Misery. And great uh, despise. Today in Jerusalem, I lament. The city is rebuilt, but the temple is destroyed, and the people is there lamenting and crying. And that wall right there, and the wall, the waiting wall, that is a testimony. It is a fire against uh, Israel. Why was the temple destroyed? Because Jesus, he left the temple. When Jesus was leaving the temple, the disciples said, no, they will not be the temple of God. The temple is destroyed because the Lord is not present anymore. Why do you have a temple? To adore who? If God is not present. When Jesus he entered the temple, all the way in Jerusalem at the time that he existed, he said, Look, they broke uh, chairs, they, they turned around uh, tables. They kicked out the uh, spell, and he said, My house will be called a house of prayer. A den of robberies. He spelled uh, all those were there. But when he left, the house of God became again. A den of teeth robbers. So when Jesus is present in the temple, he purified this temple. When Jesus is not present, some other one come to take his place. But the difference is that Jesus comes, he purifies, he gives life, saves, cure, transform, change. And the one he came, he comes to uh, kill, rob, steal, and destroy. But look, destroy this temple. But in three days, I'll rebuild. So the wooden wall in Israel, it is intensified for the sin of Israel. But it also gives to Israel hope. The wall was hope. They know that one day that wall will not be a wall. It will become again the temple, the temple of the Lord. So the temple was built, but in the time of Nehemiah, did they need to rebuild the city? Jesus, he he talks about two monuments. Um, love God under all circumstances. Um, building the temple. Listen, look, it's not Samaria, it's not Jerusalem. So, in building our spiritual life, the first thing that has to come to take place it is to put Jesus in our life. It is to accept our Christ Jesus as our only uh, Savior. It is to have an experience of salvation with the Lord. And when we have an experience of salvation with the Lord, He will build the temples. He will build our life and our spiritual life. Seek first the King, the temple, and the other things. It will be added. There were temples. There were songs. There was adoration. But nobody lives inside of a temple. 
Só o Senhor. Only the Lord. E para precisarmos de uma cidade. So they need a city. E a cidade. And the city. O templo é. Of the temple it is Jerusalém. Jerusalém. A cidade. The city. É onde a gente habita. It is where we a gente vive, live, a gente trabalha, we work, a gente convive. Uh, a cidade work, fala the, da comunidade. The city talks ah, about the community. Oh, in Brazil, we they use a lot. This community, the community of this place, the community of Rocinha. It's just like that. It is from um, there that you're gonna live, work, Interact, talk, se relacionar com as pessoas. Interact with people. E na época de Nehemiah, the temple had been rebuilt. Eu era do mundo. It was nothing. The world. O seu meu passou. The Lord reached me. And he rebuilt my spiritual life. Eu amo Deus. 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 Eu amo Here, Nehemiah, he wasn't just that. So we can say that salvation starts this first part. It has a, it has a second part. So that's why Jesus says he's the way. We have to stick with him. And in chapter seven of Nehemiah. The temple was rebuilt. The city was rebuilt too. The temple was destroyed and the city was rebuilt. And so we can say, oh no, the temple was built and the city rebuilt. <coughs> the fellowship. It was restored. First, men and men love Jesus upon all things. Second, love the next one, just like you love yourself. So, in the city of Jerusalem, it was necessary for the brothers, the Jews, to live a fellowship one with another. And Jesus. And his disciples walk in the light just like the light is, have fellowship with the brother, and the brother of Jesus Christ will provide us with all. If I don't love the brother that I see, so I don't love him. If I don't forgive my brother, the Lord will now forgive me. So he talks about this relationship, this community. He talks about body, church. It's the body of Christ. Those who um, isolate yourself, they send. So the church was created. Ecclesia. Congregation. It's a place that we congregate. When Jesus, I'm going to prepare a place. And then John says, I, I saw a new, new being in the new, new earth. So I see the, I see the hope. So the Lord says that over there in the heavens, they have a temple. They say there is no temple because the temple... Because the Lord, they see over there where we go, where we're gonna live and all that. So my brothers, the project of the Lord, it is complete. The salvation, it's a full pack. Yeah. So we leave everything because we're gonna receive a, a thousand. First man in the love of the Lord, second man in the love of the brother. And when everything was restored, the temple was restored, the fellowship was restored, 
the walls, the walls, the walls, the walls, the walls, the the doors were restored, everything was right. So we can say here to everybody that everything was right. The Lord blessed you. He rescued your life. He saved you. You didn't follow Shep with everybody else here. We didn't follow Shep over here. Because the Lord Jesus already, already gave us that. So we have a uh, temple entity. We have what the Jews didn't have in the past. And what the Jews don't have today in the present. And today we have both things. We have temple and city. Salvation and fellowship one with another. Through the blood of Jesus our Savior Christ. So this word uh, now for me is... I have a redefined city and temple. And the, and the word of the Lord for my life is... Don't open the doors of Jerusalem until the sun is hot. The Nehemiah, um, the Nehemiah, he went to the order. It's not my brothers. It's it's not an opinion. It's not a advice. It's an order. It's an order of the Lord, the order of the Holy Spirit. Don't open the doors of Jerusalem until the sun is hot. It was common in Jerusalem, they would close the doors around 6, uh, six in the afternoon and open at 6 in the morning. Because after 6 in the morning, it will get dark. At 6 in the afternoon, it will get dark, so the robbers will try to come in. So when the robbers couldn't get inside at night, you know. So, and then they would try to come really early in the morning when the sun was rising. At night, they talk about darkness. Dark. And you can't identify who's coming. Why? Because there's not a light. You can't see. In the morning, when we wake up, we wake up a little, <laughs> a little tired, you know. And it was just like that. So the brothers wouldn't be, wouldn't pay attention, unaware. So once at night, it's dark, you don't see. So close the door. If you're not, if it is morning, the, the sun's gonna rise, and it's not that yet, this word rose, but there's not there's that light, the sun is not hot, you're not sure who's coming, who's entering, don't open the doors. The, the, don't open the doors. If you don't understand the, the project of the Lord, Clearance um, about the uh, approaches, the consultation, the sign that was given to you through a brother, a prophet. Don't open the door. In Brazil, we, we do something that's wrong. We only close the door after the robbers. Isn't that right? And my mom says, oh, open the word's dog inside. So, if you leave a gap, the enemy, boom, will come in. So, you're not sure. You can see things clearly. So, close the door. Precaution. There's a verse in the Bible that says, um, what, uh, be vigilant and pray. So the, uh, so what the Lord wants it is, do not open the doors of Jerusalem. So, 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 it's around 8 and 9. That's when it starts to get hot. It 
It's around nine. Six? Six is talking about the man. What I think. My understanding, my reason. And nine is talking about the uh, spiritual gifts to the spiritual. The Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit, is fire, it gets hot, it makes it hot. So it needs to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, with the fire. So the Holy Spirit revealed me all things, and now I can open the door. Why? Because now I'm, I have insurance. So if I'm not sure, yeah, I shouldn't open the door. Even though my spiritual life or my things, my relationship, the youth always like in a girl. How's this thing going? Let the sun. That's hot. It's hot. Yeah. Open the door. It's not hot yet. It's a little dark. It's too early. It's early. Just play a little more and wait for the sun to come out. And then you open the door. In Brazil, we have. Uh, a person that I always tell the youth that he wants to, to get married. He paid pre prayed and one day he was uh, really used to this particular and he didn't like to sit in the door. And one day he came up to me He said, Oh, Pastor, I want to be in the door. What happened? Oh, nothing. There they go. I went and I prayed for him and he was in uh, on the door and uh, a lady walked by. And, uh, and the Lord has showed him a day before in a, in a dream. And this lady, when she passed by from the, from the door of the church, the Lord said, it's that one. And then he looked at the lady and said, glory to God. Amen. But then he didn't open the door. No. The lady, she was baptized. She she went to uh, Grace Group, then she went to Teachers. This lady, uh, she had a dream that she, that she was gonna get married with uh, Julio. The, that was the name. She had a dream. She didn't open the door. She was quiet, you know. Let's get the let's pray for the let's pray for the sun to get hot. Let the Spirit, Holy Spirit to act. And then her mom had a dream. And the other day, the morning, the day. Oh, Charlie! <laughs> you, you, you have no idea what's, what happened. I had a dream of you getting married with Julio. And she's like, oh, glory to Jesus. She, they, 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 look, they went after the pastor, and yeah, there you go. I think I high and they got two kids now, you know, it's a blessing. So don't open the doors until the sun it's hot. Until they watch there, it says. They were talking about the people who was in Jerusalem. And that was uh, watching Jerusalem. Watching, we're not talking about watch like watch a movie or something. No, watch. We, we, talking, it is to give assistant. And when you give assistant right there, who would give assistant? Let's get right here. Um, my memory is not really good, so I have to put on the paper. So until you, you're there, until you're present in that place, until you're together in the body, until you live. So you're talking about the, the people that live in Jerusalem, that watch the community of Jerusalem. But they couldn't open the doors. So this is really to um, assistant group deacons, workers, the youths, the ladies, 
the features, all those uh, functions in the house of the Lord, the workers of Jerusalem, all the members, all the community. This responsibility it wasn't from only one person, it from everybody. Because if the bad entered Jerusalem, everyone would suffer. Everyone would go up. Because Jerusalem is cut, its body. So, what happened? So, what was going to happen to one that would be that would reflect over all Jerusalem? If one left a gap, the enemy would come inside, it would, and it would give. Uh, the harm would be for everyone. So, don't open the doors of Jerusalem until we watch there. And we that are watching Jerusalem and we are giving assistance to Jerusalem on the realization of the project of the Lord, of the Holy Spirit. This responsibility is from everyone, so don't open the doors. If we don't understand, we can do clear, um, clearly. So if it's too early, don't press the and don't open the doors. Let's wait for the sun to go ahead. Let's I'll wait for the Holy Spirit to operate. Let the Lord reveal all things. And it says, the Lord of the Lord of And while we watch the, while we are here, here, it is my responsibility. My responsibility to the workers, it is your responsibility. The responsibility of every single one of us. So we depend on each other. What we see here, it's a body. You see it? Look at the body. My body, it doesn't depend on other people. For me to be here, I need a heart, a liver, lung, I need nerves, veins, bone, me, I need de tripa, tudo. Tripa. Se um falhar, minha mãe teve um. If one of those things goes wrong, like, you know, my mother, she had a, a heart attack and some other problems. She died with 84 years old in a liver problem. Meu pai morreu de efizema com um pulmonar agudo. My dad died from, my dad from, died from a, a disease in the lung, one of the lungs stopped working, but it was all good, only one lung stopped and then boom, he died. Church is this, it's body. So, if one of the members, they die. All the body will sink. If one of my fingers, if I put my finger there, my finger will lie. It is temple and city. The temple sanctifies the city. There's temple, there's no lament. There's city, there's no disgrace, suffering. That's no suffering. City wall and temple. Father, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's the Trinity. So I'm gonna say something about this door right here. How is this door? It was closed. What about now? What about now? Is there a difference between uh, close and lock? Yeah, there is. This is what we're going to get. The ones who are giving assistance is written like this. They need to close the door. When we hear a message, when you come to 
uh, vigil. Message, the message was given by a person who is giving assistance here, Pastor Ronildo. And that message was so the people of the city of Jerusalem would close their gates. Amen. So the ones who give assistance, they can close the door. I can close the door. Each message that is being brought here is to close the door. If each advice that we receive from the part of the Lord or for, from a brother is to close the door. The group of assistants that go to your house to bless you in order for the gates to be closed against the, the doors against the enemy be closed. You understand? So, the role of the church, the brand here, the group of, of assistants, deacons, and ushers, is to close the door. The teachers are teaching our children how to close the gates. 6.15 on the afternoon, uh, which is the youth meeting, the youth are learning how to close the gate. The women, every Saturday at 6 o'clock in the afternoon, close the door. Do not open the door. Wait until the sun is warm. Allow, wait for the uh, direction from the Holy Spirit. So closing means to prevent access from the interior and exterior. It's to put fence, to put limits. It's not to accept what comes from outside. It's to block the passage. It's to impose. This, this is not going to take place here. For this matter, the gate is closed. Oh, but it not here. In the house of the Lord, it's not going to happen. The door is closed. Didn't Jerusalem close the doors? They transformed the house of the Lord, the house of prayer, into a den of robbers and criminals. They forgot to close the gate. If it is not from the Lord, close the door. It's not here. Oh, but here? Not here. In the temple of the Lord? No. We are temple of the Holy Spirit. Here? Only the Holy Spirit. Here, only the Lord. This this thing is not going to happen. The door is closed for this. This type of uh, behavior is not going to take place here. The door is going to be closed. And they say, and you lock it. So what we can do as a church is to close the doors. But in order to lock this door, I cannot lock this door. Why can I not lock this door? Because I don't have the key. The key. The control. The code, the password. You know who has it, my brethren? It's you. I can close the door for you, but I cannot lock it up. Who, the one who has to lock it is you. The brother can pray for your life in order for this door to be closed that does not belong to, for the things that do not belong to the Lord, but you are the one who has to lock it because you are the one who has the key. You has the pass. You have the password. You have the code. I don't have a key of your house. No, I don't. Do you have a, a password for your bank account? No. Who has the 
the password for your bank account is you. Who has to lock your house is you. Is the car yours? Who has the key for your car? Is it me or you? It's you. The car is yours. The life. Your life. It's not mine. Your life is yours. You are the one who knows how to lock it. You have the password. You have the code. You, you lock it up. And what it is to lock is to close with the lock. It is to bolt it. It is to establish in a way that no one can enter or leave. You have this power. The Bible doesn't speak about free will, but there is a free will. God gave you free will. You are the one who decides between heaven and hell. You are the one who chooses between life and death. You are the one who decides between blessing and curse. You are the one who decides between the temple destroyed uh, or temple re -edified. You are the one who decides city destroyed or city re -edified. You are the one who decides. You have the key. And who has the key? If you have the key. Who is the key? Who, who is the code? Who is the password? Jesus said, I am. I have. I have the key. Jesus says, I have the key. I open. And no one can close it. But if I close, if I, I Jesus, close, no one opens. So, my bread in your house, the sun is not worn up. These doors closed in the name of Jesus. Here, the enemy will not enter. Why? Because the blood of Jesus has purified this house and will bless my family. Remember the angel of death? The Egyptians they didn't have the key. The Egyptians didn't have the code. But the people of Israel had the key, had the code, had the, the password. They knew, they knew the secret. And what was the secret? Blood. On the doorposts. The door was closed to death. The door was closed to the enemy. It didn't, the enemy didn't answer that. You know why? Because there was blood. The blood of Jesus Christ purifies of every sin. The blood of Jesus Christ that preserves our life, our home, our house. The blood of Jesus Christ that will take us to eternity. It's the blood of Jesus. And you have this key. So it's closed. It's locked in the name of Jesus. Let us decree this in our life, in our spiritual life. You know, if I'm at work, not here. This temple is being consecrated to the Lord. Uh, my life is consecrated to the Lord. There in Jerusalem, there was a uh, eastern door. And this eastern door will be closed. Because the Lord entered through this door. And that's why it's going to be closed. My brother, God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, one one day enter into our lives through this door from the east, this door of salvation, this door of grace. He entered, so now let's close the door so that no one else would enter, so that only he would him inhabit, reside, and live in Jerusalem. Because if the temple is built, the city will be rebuilt. If your spiritual life is well in the presence of God, if you are well in the presence of the Lord, all the other things will be added on to you. I will not lack anything. There is a service, praise, and adoration to the Lord. And now with the city re-edified, there is no longer despise and abandonment. You know why? Because the Lord restored all things. And God will dry up from your eyes every tear. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
did not open the gates of Jerusalem until the sun was on. Uh, close the door and appoint guards from among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. This is interesting. So the prophet says that we need to put guards, vigil, vigilant, <coughs> sentinels. You need to be vigilant and pray. You have to be constantly vigilant. The guard of Jerusalem had to be an inhabitant of Jerusalem. You should not hire someone from outside, a foreigner. Because the guard of Jerusalem, that is an inhabitant of Jerusalem, it worries about Jerusalem, it, is, it cares about the people of Jerusalem and the city of Jerusalem. And he knows the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Is somebody a foreigner entered there? He'll know this person is a foreigner. He's not an inhabitant. He's not part of this community. That's why the, the inhabitant, the guard, the guard needed to be an inhabitant of Jerusalem. That, so it's a brother taking care of the other brother, a sister taking care of the other sister, the church taking care of one another. So if I see that my brother here is going to enter into a difficulty, I, as a guard uh, in inhabitant of Jerusalem, I have an obligation to help him and alert him and say, my brother, stop this, let us pray, let us allow the sun warm up, let us seek a direction from the Lord so that you don't enter in difficulty, because if he enters, I also enter. So the guard needs to be an inhabitant of Jerusalem. So one taking care of the other. The church, your body Christ, is, is, has to be one taking care of the other. In practice, if a brother is unemployed, if you know about something, then you help your brother. If you are in a difficult situation, so let us help the, the brother, because in the future you will be, you can be the one that will be helped. If you help today, you tomorrow will be helped. So the the guards, the sentinels, had to be inhabitants of Jerusalem, because they know the city, they know the community, and they care about that community. Uh, they care about that people. So one at his watch uh, station. So it speaks of of a function. The pastor has his own guard. The deacon has his own guard. The archer has his own guard. A member of a group of assistants has his own guard. Each one stays in the vocation that he's being called for. We all have a responsibility. Uh, what is not right is a member to act like a pastor because a member is a member. A pastor is a pastor. The deacon is, is, is not a pastor. The wife of the pastor, she's not a, a pastor also. The wife of the deacon is not a, a deacon as well. My son is not a pastor. I am the pastor. So each person stay on his own watch post. Each one on his own. Uh, watch station. Each one is going to help uh, uh, their brother in, in, but each one on their own role, each one on their own function. It's not the responsibility of a guard to take the, the function of another guard. He will take on the, his own function. If you are an instrumentalist, he will care for the instrument. He will take care of the praises of the Lord in the house of the Lord, and that's his function. So each one on his uh, watch station, and says more, and another in front of his own house. My brother, there's it, it's, it's no purpose for us to take care of the church and to take care of the life of the brethren, instruct the children of the brethren. If I'm not watching my own house, it is worthless for me to take care of the spiritual life of my church if I don't take care of my own spiritual life. It is worthless for me to teach the children of my brethren to walk on the path of the Lord if I don't teach my own children. It is worthless for me to, to tell the brother to take, protect his house, 
to prevent the enemy from entering to his house if, if I don't do the same to my own house. So each person taking care of their own house. Firstly, our lives. Firstly, our spiritual life. Firstly, our own home. Firstly, our own family. Each person in front of their own house. Because if each one of us take care of our own house and our spiritual life, if each one of us take care of our own family, take care of our own wives, take care of our own children, the problem is resolved. Each one in front of their own house, each person taking care of their own life, each person being vigilant of their own selves, each person demanding of themselves, each person changing themselves. The greatest problem of Israel in the time of Jesus was the Pharisees and Sadducees. And Jesus complained about it and said, look, these people there, they, they keep trying to find problems on people's, other people's lives. They try to find too many details and then they, they don't take care of their own lives. Have you seen this? It's written there. The Pharisee stayed at the door of the temple. They would not enter and they would not allow anybody to enter into the temple. It was a problem because they were always worried about everyone else except to their own spiritual life, except with their own home, except with their own house. So here the Lord says, take care of your own house. We need to begin to change. We need to begin by changing ourselves. A, a while ago we used to say, wife, you need to change. Wife, you need to change. But one day the Lord spoke to me. Sábado, you need to change. I was very worried with the house of my wife, with the life of my wife. But then the Lord says, Sabado, we need to take care of our own life. You're not good. Remember the king, Zechariah, he was there, um, very happy with his life. And then the prophet came, you're going to die. You're the one who is bad. You're the one who's going to die. So Zechariah, stop worrying about the other things, turn to the wall. And he was worried about his own life. He prayed for his own life. Lord, have mercy on me. And he received the blessing of the Lord. So the church in which we are living is the church of Laodicea. The church of Laodicea said the following, I am rich and I lack nothing. And the Lord Jesus says, You are miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Sometimes we think that we are very well and that everyone else needs to change. But the Lord says, watch over your own house, watch over your own life, watch over your own family. Now, bring this message to a close. There, in Brazil, there was a deacon. I was a deacon. There's nothing against deacons, but this man, he was a, a man that was difficult to deal with. He was always worried about the life of every youth, adolescent, and everyone in, in the church. He only would only open up his mouth to criticize. One day, his 16-year-old daughter got pregnant. Every time that something like this happened in the church, he said, Pastor, Spell that person. You need to spell that person. Exclude this person from the church. He's in sin also. All, all those things. He always criticized. But then his 16-year-old daughter got pregnant. Oh, Pastor, Lord of mercy. You know, Pastor. 
my 16-year-old daughter. She's a child. From this day forward, he understood one thing. I need to take care of my own house. I need to take care of my own house. So there was a pastor called, in the Bible called, a priest called Eli. He was a pastor, like I am, a priest. And his children, they were a problem. The children of Eli were a problem. Of Nephaniah, they were a problem. But they lived all the time, always complimenting his children. Well, if he, someone else's children, you criticize, but his children, he always treated well. But he didn't close the door. He didn't take care of his house and his own family. Everyone knows what happened afterwards. They all, all three, his, he died and his children died. His two boys died. Each one watched over his own house. He, each one watch on their own station. Now we can sing the song that you, you're playing, and then we're going to take care of our own house afterwards. Take care of our own lives. Amen. The Holy Spirit of God. Glory to Jesus. Just to bring uh, this service to close. Relationship be between parents and children today in America now is difficult. But the home needs to be in agreement. If the house has a father and mother, 
If the mother closes a door, the father needs to lock it. If the father closes the door, the mother needs to lock it. Will two walk uh, together if, you, if they are not in agreement? So if a, a child is doing something different, the father gives an advice, the mother cannot be against the, the advice of the father. If the father closed, the mother go there and lock it. Confirm. And she needs to say, that's right, this is not good for you. If the mother said, the father has to say, oh, your mother is right. That's what it is. You're going to do according to the way he, she ordered. So, you need to close and the other needs to lock it. Amen? In prayer, in vigilance, in the care that we need to have of our own homes. And we need to have authority for this. An authority. It's given with a testimony. When the soldiers went there to imprison Jesus, when they arrived there, Jesus was preaching the word. They didn't imprison Jesus because Jesus spoke with authority. So we need to get confused between brutality with authority. Sometimes I am from the north of Brazil. I'm sometimes a very brute. I'm very rude. <laughs> Uh, just the example that I gave, I asked her to change, change, and one day God asked to change. So then my wife said, I want to change. And then I told her, no, you don't have to change. She didn't even understand what happened. If you're, you're well the way you are. So we need to confuse brutality with authority. Authority is related to respect, is related to a testimony. We as a parent, we need to give this testimony to our children so that we may have authority in the way we speak with each one of them. In Brazil, we have a pastor. He stayed a couple of days. Pastor Ali, sometimes he stayed in my house. And there we have the possibility at noon to have lunch with the whole family. And he arrived, his wife and children came, and we all sat at the table, and together we prayed. And the cell phones were all outside. Nobody answering to the, his, his table. Not even we if, we, if we come to visit, we come with a cell phone because he has already given this testimony. He, here, this time is a time of fellowship with my family so we can talk. This social network thing is for another time. Now, this moment here, the moment of the family without hitting anybody or shouting or any brutality but they all respect God it is a testimony and this testimony is visible to whoever goes there and know them and live with them and you will have this opportunity by July he will be here and we're going to introduce him Pastor Gary, we're calling it Sheriff. Let us stand up. There is a gift the Lord has shown that we need to pray with lay your hands for the entire church. We're going to pray, pray for the children, intermediate, and also for the entire church. If you want, you can kneel down or remain standing. The blessing will come in the same way. The Lord is saying that, especially giving a blessing of healing to a few of our brethren. Amen. A deacon can pray. Lord, we plead to you for the blood of Jesus. And you take with with your hands. Your hands may be laying upon us, upon your church. Bless your people. That your word may remain in our hearts. Let the children 
give them your deliverance. The schools, that's the, the teachers, give them wisdom, patience, health to teach the, the children. Give them strengthening to a church in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, receive our adoration. Take us in peace under your protection. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your name you say, the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The service is over at 6.15. We have a meeting with the youth. And later on, 7.30, you service our glorification of the Lord and to our peace of the Lord. We're going to be praying for the family of Sister Marlucia and Marcia. They uh, suffered a loss and may the Lord give consolation to their hearts and to their whole family, especially to the sister and the return of Pastor Ronildo, who is going to be returning from London soon to our region when to all the peace of the Lord.